So I did a media fast and a media immersion and I'm going to talk about my reflection on this video blog. So basically I did my media fast in the Easter holidays because I thought it would be easier than doing it at university and there's too many distractions and like work and stuff to do. And I decided to do it on Sunday as well because me and my friends went out on a night out on a Saturday night. And I, I was feeling hungry around the Sunday, we didn't come in until late, so I kind of slept till lunchtime and sleep is an excellent way to avoid media. Um, but yeah, obviously there was a lot of problems with the fast, like when I wake up I'm used to checking my phone and stuff and I couldn't and it was really hard to stop myself like not checking my phone. And um, you know, there was this feeling of isolation, like well I'm missing out, what's going on on the likes of Facebook and Twitter and stuff, I want to know, like, I don't like not being in the know, it was really hard. Um, but anyway, I'd decided that I'd go on a, on a big long walk to try and avoid media as well. Um, but I needed to get into contact with my boyfriend. And obviously, with no way to contact anyone, I could only speak to people that were in close, close proximity with me. So I had to go to mum and ask her to get in contact with my boyfriend to arrange his time to meet up and whatnot to go for this big long walk. But anyway, it got sorted. Um, and we went on this walk. It was like three and a half hours long. My legs killed after I don't think I've ever walked for that long. Um, and that was good if walking was a good way to avoid media but then I kind of thought hang on a minute if I think of the origins of media you know like body voice and tools walking is, is that not using my body is that not like bipedalism is that media is, is brushing my hair is using a hairbrush is a tool is that media is mascara a tool is that is that media you know that, the whole way through it posed what is media what is it media kind of thing and um well, I kind of found myself doing a lot of cleaning as well. Like after my walk, I came home and I was like, well, what do I do with myself? And I cleaned, I cleaned my guinea pig out. I was vacuuming, I was dusting, I was tidying my room. My parents have the fact I was on a media fast. They wish I'd do it more often. But yeah, I was cleaning. And the, but the thing is, it was quite eerie. Like It was like silent cleaning. There was no music in the background. I love my music. and There was no TV in the background. And even if I wanted to go and speak to people, they were probably like using media, like I couldn't go speak to my parents because they were sat watching the football and in the lounge and I was kind of like a robot and I did go in at one point and sat down and was like watching the TV for five minutes and I was like, oh my god, what am I doing? So like, I ran out. And... But yeah, it was like, my boyfriend was like on Facebook and Twitter laughing at stuff and I was like, oh let me see, I don't know what's going on, but I couldn't. You're so secluded and isolated, it wasn't a nice feeling. I mean, I suppose you can kind of resort to the fact that yeah it was nice to just sit down and chat and not have distractions from my phone like vibrating and going off and giving me notifications and it is nice to go for, for long walks and stuff and do something different well that's what it was it was different it was like a whole new world it was yeah I don't think I'd make a habit of doing a media fast I don't think I rely on the media too much I wouldn't really temper my media consumption I'd probably still use the same amount of media as I do now, so it just wasn't a brilliant experience, but it, it was good to have done, so yeah. So yeah, my media immersion, where my journal became my best friend and was glued to me all day, it became really annoying, like, I knew there was a lot of media messaging and like, I probably didn't pay attention to it, but it was subconsciously there, but my journal made me realise this a visual culture that we lived in like there is so much media messaging like th I can see why there's like 5,000 MBS that we come into contact with every day particularly when I went to Tesco's people were looking at me like I was walking down the aisles as you do like writing down all these media messages and signs and offers and bargains and stuff and it's like information overload like everywhere you look there's just signs and stuff and you're driving in the car and you, you see like you go past this van and it's like Henry's dry cleaning service, you have to write that down and then like there's vans and billboards and signs and particularly on the likes of social media as well like Facebook, like you go onto Facebook and before you can even look at your timeline there's like adverts all down the side and Twitter and people promoting their blogs and stuff and it kind of tied in with this saturated self like because I belong to a lot of social media networks and I'm absorbing everyone else's like opinions and stuff what is my true self what's my true opinions and you know when I went onto YouTube I really wanted to look for a song but you go to type in the song name and the home page like left and right is just adverts and media messaging and everything magazines the worst oh my god pick up a magazine to read at lunchtime and there's like 
more adverts than articles. I swear there is. Like, you're just flicking through and it's like advert, advert, advert. Ooh, article, that looks interesting. And it's the same on television. You know, you're watching the TV for 15 minutes and there's eight adverts. You're watching TV for another 15 minutes. There's eight adverts. I didn't actually realise there was there was that many adverts. And oh, I think that's the reason I realised that I use my phone a lot more for social media than I do on the actual internet. Like I might sit with my laptop open, but then I've got, I'm go actually going through my phone to go on Facebook and Twitter, and I think it's because on my phone I don't come in contact with these advertisements. You know, it's much more direct and much more straight to the point. So yeah, um, this journal was quite an eye opener. There is so much media messaging, like even on my toothpaste and my facial washes and my body scrubs, you know, just normal everyday things, the special microfibers in this and whatnot, it's, whew, yeah, it was um, quite crazy to be honest, um, and I think that as new medias come out, it's only going to become more prevalent, all this media messaging, um, I just found this image that I wanted to show you. So that's um, a place in Tokyo at the moment and basically I thought I should show you it because I think it kind of reflects how our society is going to be in the future like if we carry on with this media messaging and there is a lot of it but I think we need it because we are obsessed with consumerism without advertising how we're going to know what we can buy and stuff, how we're going to know what we can consume. Um, but I think at the rate we're going, our society too will end up looking like Tokyo, you know, with just adverts and media messaging everywhere. Because the more we consume, the more media messages we produce. So yeah, I'd say the good points about media fast were no distractions, I could just like totally concentrate on the person I was like talking to or whatnot. But the bad points were I felt really secluded and isolated and lonely. And um, the good points about the media fast were, wow, over my eyes the bombardment of the like media messaging. Um, the bad points were probably like I had this journal that I had to constantly update. I was in Tesco with like one leg in my jean and one leg out and suddenly my phone was going off and I was getting a text and there was an announcement on the tannoy in Tesco and I was like thinking oh I've got to write all this in my journal, it was a nightmare. So yeah, um, I think there is a lot of media messaging but probably not too much yet. Possibly in the future there may be too much if we turn into like the likes of Tokyo. But yeah, I don't think I changed the amount of media I use. It's, it's normal, it's part of my everyday life, so 